You guys love the first one, so I'm here for a part two. And if you guys have been on this channel for a while, you know that I like to do stuff in Illustrator and combine it with InDesign. So here, when I open Affinity and everything's together, we have vector, pixel, and layout all together. That got me thinking, is it a lot better? It's Is it a lot easier to switch between the three? And we're gonna do that with this layout. Absolutely perfect. We use a little bit of Illustrator first and then we go into InDesign originally. So we're gonna test out the exact same workflow to see if I can get the exact same output. If you guys wanna learn how to do this in Illustrator and InDesign, I'll have a link down in the description below so that you can just check out the tutorial on our website. It's fairly simple and it makes a really cool layout. So let's get started. All right, folks, I have affinity open. Let's go create what I want in layout first. So if I want an eight and a half by 11 spread, okay, going to go ahead and click new, and then we're gonna go into our letter. Where is it? Right here, multi-page, facing page, vertical, margins, 0.5. So I have my page created. Let's see if we can just go straight into vector. Oh, it does, it keeps the page. So are these, like, are they artboards basically? I wonder if there's an artboard tool here somewhere. Here's the artboard tool. Oh, interesting. So these are these are actually not artboards. You guys know how this works. Uh, let me know in the comments because artboards and pages seem to be completely different in this in this program. It's, it's telling me artboards cannot be added to a document with multiple pages or master page. Okay, so anyways, doesn't matter for us too much since we're trying to create some shapes here anyways. So let's see if we can right click on this. There we go, okay. I'm just gonna create some nice circles. So dragging shift is the same. We're creating a proportional circle. And I want about three for each row here, similar to what we originally had. So let's see if we can do that easily. Oh my God, still getting used to the zoom in and out. But these are crossing just a little bit. So let's see if it, yeah, there we go. Okay, it snapped to the edge there, which is exactly what I want. Great, I do want these to go all the way out to the page. So I'll hold shift and just drag these all the way out. Perfect. And then we're going to use the alt key, drag these guys down. Why? Why won't these guys snap? Oh, there we go. So you kind of have to select it a second time for it to register as its own thing. Okay, I'm gonna copy that one more time, release my mouse button, snap. Pop that one more time, release the mouse button, snap. A little bit weird, but hey, maybe that's just how it is. So it looks great. I'm gonna do that on the other side as well. But first I'm dragging this to the middle here. And then I'll just copy all these guys over. Again, release in order to get the the alignment and the smart guides on. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on there. I feel like you should be able to just immediately use it for a smart guide. I'll show you guys what I mean. So if I go ahead and drag this and I copy it in, you can see it's not snapping to anything. Like it, it doesn't really snap to any of these points, but as soon as I release my mouse button and redo this, you can see all these guides, they, they start to pop out. Instead of the two commands, is there a way to just make it snap automatically? Not sure. So we have all our shapes. We're gonna try to use the equivalent of the Pathfinder tool in Illustrator and try to see if it is also here. So wish me luck. Select all of this. Vector geometry? Is it some? Nope. Vector geometry intersect? Nope. Vector geometry compound? No, that's the thing we did last time. In Illustrator, there is a Shift M shortcut key that I can use to go to the Pathfinder. See if that works. It did something. One hour later. Okay, guys, I figured it out. It is very simple. It's on the left. There's actually a whole tool dedicated to it called the Shape Builder tool. Okay, so let's try to create the exact same geometry as I had before. We'll go boom, 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 boom. We'll leave those two. Boom. We're gonna delete all the ones that I don't need. All right, I believe that was it. Okay, so this is all of our shapes. Can't preview obviously, cause we're in vector or illustrator. Okay, so in the original tutorial, this is the part where we take this shape and bring it into InDesign to add the rest of the flare. So I'm gonna try that out. I'm All I'm gonna do is go from vector to layout. I'm not even gonna close the program or anything or switch program, but let's see what this comes in as. I'm gonna go into the layer. Okay, so these are all 
curves. So that's, that's pretty good. I think that's exactly what they come in as if you copy and paste it in from Illustrator into InDesign. So it's good to see that we're saving actually a, a step here and it's already made the shape for us. Okay, what I wanna do now is make these all one compound path. Okay, so if I remember correctly, you drag in your image first, right? And then just shape it. I'm gonna drag this layer all the way down so I can actually see my circles. Okay, great. So the model's eyes are inside of the circles. I'm gonna drag it out to the bleed mark and just increase the size until I cover that last circle here. And then we're gonna drag it down just a little bit so that we can capture both our eyes in these circles. And then next, I'm actually gonna try to lock this layer. So, okay, looks like it's right here. I can just lock it from that icon. And then we're gonna need to make all of this into a compound path. So I believe that's vector and then create compound. Ooh, that is not what I wanted. It got rid of everything in the middle here, which I actually wanted to keep the shapes of everything here rather than have it all merge. So I wonder if there's another way to do this. If we group it, we can theoretically clip these two, right? So if I do this, right click, create clipping mask, I think what I need to do is actually go to this group and then switch the stroke and fill. And let's say that I want a little bit of a white, like outside edge. Let's see if this works. If I go and create a clipping mask here. Oh God, what have I created here? <laughs> what is going on? Um, okay, merge selected and then create clipping mask. No, it's the same thing. Oh. Seven hours later. Okay, well, we might have to just do this the more manual way. If you guys know a way to do this, please, please, please let me know. Like that would be super helpful. And we're going to group this, copy the group. So we're gonna control J, copy that group. Okay, so it made the group and then we're going to, I guess, do we have to? Yeah, I guess we have to click inside the group to edit it. So I'm going to give this a no fill and then we're gonna exit out of that group and then we're gonna turn on this group and then what we're gonna do is use this group which is the exact same thing as the other group to do a clipping mask of whatever's underneath uh, and then we're gonna turn on the top layer here to get the same effect so if I go ahead and preview, remind me, what is preview again, guys? What was it again? Preview, control shift W. Okay, that's the V buttons. Okay, so in the original, we had a nice picture over on the small one, and then we had some quotes on the big one, but we did have to flip these guys horizontally, like mirror it. So let's see if we can do that easily. Group this first, so right click, group. What if we just, that? That works really well if you just drag the transform. However, we kind of, we need the other one to go this way. So if I drag this here, yeah, there's no way to get that shape. What if we, okay. All right, so that's, <laughs> it's a lot easier than having to do like transform tools. So that did work for us, which is great. I'm going to align so it has the same size. We'll ungroup this and then we'll drag this guy down. Over here, we had the same kind of color scheme as what was going on here. So we'll select fill and then we'll select the eyedropper. Oh, maybe we have to drag. The, yeah, we have to drag the eyedropper out. So we'll go ahead and just pick a color that's actually on our image. Um, and then for this one, we actually want a picture. Maybe we can do something like this. We're gonna do the same thing and then create a clipping mask. So let's do the text first. We're going to give it a nice text wrap, but essentially we're doing a title, a subheading, and then some body. Title first, let's do like a 72. Is there a way for me to change this? Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, and you can preview it right Oh, you guys see that? That's pretty cool. Okay, our subheading. All right, looks pretty good. And then I'm going to give it another text over here. And then we're going to fill this with filler text. We're gonna make that two. I'm gonna decrease just the center here. I do want to text wrap this window and go down here to show text wrap settings. And we can actually just make it, let's go tight, yeah. This is the one we want, but maybe a little bit more. So let's increase the margins here. Text box down here, one, and we'll fill it with 
place order text right justified thus so the last part is inserting a quote in two of these circles it sounds easy but you have to ignore the text wrap that's already on this shape so let's see if we can figure that out we're gonna begin by doing the same thing thing by going and creating a text box okay so since the christmas holidays are coming up let's do something like this align center let's see if we can place it here nope it's gonna disappear and it's disappearing because we have a text wrap on this shape so how do we ignore text wrap layer effect Ooh, what's this whoa wait wait that's really cool actually can outline it wow okay so it's kind of bringing a lot of the photoshop effects straight into here i think if we have the selected go into text text wrap there is an ignore text wrap here so let's see if this works okay there we go okay pat myself on the back there let's also give it a nice quote and we did it another one in the books let's go Okay, overall, I did find that the experience was actually really smooth between vector and to layouts. It's like you don't have to switch program, which is really, really good. I do wonder, though, if you're losing some of the functionality from each one of these programs, because I do see that some of these tabs, like the vector tab on the top, is shared between the two programs. Maybe the options are a little bit different. I haven't done a deep dive, but... I'm really wondering if, you know, you lose some of that speciality in the programs when everything is combined like this. You guys let me know. Maybe you guys have experimented a lot more in this than I have. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Are you guys already switching? I, I saw a bunch of mixed comments in the last one. So let's keep that discourse going. And with that said, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.